Dr. Shahid, thank you so much for joining us here on Health Connection. Exciting topic. There have been lots of advances in the treatment of cancer, but one of the most exciting is immunotherapy. Cancer patients now have this option in many cases. Give us a definition. What is immunotherapy? Um, thank you very much for inviting me to your show. Um, it really is. It's a very exciting option. So what immunotherapy really is, uh, let's just start with that. It is our latest uh, our frontier, our la latest treatment option for fighting cancer. And um, it is also called biotherapy. And, and the way it works is it stimulates our own immune cells uh, to fight cancer, either by enhancing them or stimulating them. Tell me then the types of cancer that are most likely to be treated, benefit most from immunotherapy? So immunotherapy has, uh, so it's not monolithic. It comes in a variety of flavors. Uh, by immunotherapy, we are uh, talking about checkpoint blockade. We are talking about monoclonal antibodies, and we're also talking about CAR-T vaccines. So immunotherapy has shown um, a lot of success in treating non-small cell lung cancers and melanomas. And now um, we are bringing it to treat all other different types of cancers. So essentially, it's being used in trials every day uh, to treat new and different cancers every day. Which, uh, just amplifying on that, which cancers do you think are next in line to be really successfully treated? Well, if you look at the ASCO 2016 updates, uh, there has been um, a lot of exciting data uh, from our prior trials on head and neck. And um, those were in patients who were heavily pretreated with traditional chemotherapy. Um, but looks like they do have uh, a lot of good effect with uh, checkpoint inhibition, which is part of immunotherapy. Explain what that means. So checkpoint blockade. Um, so over the years, um, cancer cells uh, developed a way to um, ambush the immune system. Um, our immune system has the capability to fight cancer, but our um, cancer cells just uh, found a way to hide. And um, the way they did, they, they did this is by uh, expressing some protein markers, which would ultimately block the action of the immune cells, the T lymphocytes. So all this checkpoint blockade is about unleashing that break on the immune system okay. so that the immune system can, through all its um, inflammatory cytokines and unleash all its activity to kill cancer. Who's a good candidate for immunotherapy? Well, um, most important thing, uh, they got to have the biomarkers. Um, and um, key, it has been used very successfully in patients who are too weak or too frail. Um, you, must, uh, uh, you must have seen a lot of our uh, cancer population. They are very frail and very old. And um, the side effect profile of chemotherapy is really uh, something to, to bear in mind. And sometimes we feel they are not candidates to get traditional chemo. And this is where uh, immune checkpoint blockade and immunotherapy has shown a remarkable success. And we can use it on those patients who probably are not candidates to receive traditional chemo. Um, and more recently, it has been used uh, upfront as um, like, you know, uh, instead of chemotherapy in some of the cancers based on the biomarker profile if uh, that cancer patient has that. So just to add a little bit more color here, how does immunotherapy differ from traditional cancer treatments such as chemotherapy and radiation therapy? Well, um, I give this analogy to my patients and um, um, it kind of works well and they understand it well. So if, can if cancer cells um, are, is your enemy, chemotherapy, traditional chemotherapy is like corporate bombing. You are just bombing them, you're not worried about anything else, you're just bombing the cancer cells. On the other hand... So it'll be like you're bombing the whole city in order, to take, out, in order to take out one target, you exactly. bomb the whole city. Okay, exactly. Got, got so it. there's right. a lot of collateral damage. Uh, with immunotherapy, we are talking about um, a Navy SEAL mission, you know, especially trained to kill those cancer cells. So there is less collateral damage. Mm -hmm. So as, I think that is the most important difference between traditional chemo and uh, immunotherapy, so less side effects, less nausea, vomiting. Uh, neutropenic fever is a dreaded complication for all oncologists. Uh, patients get chemo, their white cell counts go low, um, they develop fever, they get sepsis, and they die. 
On the other hand, there is no neutropenic fever with immunotherapy. So I think that's where it, it comes really, uh, it becomes really important. Immunotherapy, is there a one size fits all or are there different ways that it's used to treat cancer? Um, no, it, uh, it is, so there are various immunotherapies av uh, available. As I said, it's not monolithic. Uh, it comes in a variety of flavors. We are looking at um, monoclonal antibodies. We are looking at CAR T cells and vaccine therapy for hematologic malignancies and then checkpoint blockade. So, so let's, let's get a little, let's get some lay terms. Hematologic, what do we mean by that? So um, by hematologic malignancies, I'm talking about uh, acute leukemias, okay. lymphomas, and you know all uh, that spectrum of diseases which comes under the blood uh, cancers. Um, so, um, so immunotherapy um, like seems to have a role now um, in, in, all, in all this. Uh, we are using monoclonal antibodies um, um, to fight this, these hematologic malignancies, and a lot of them are currently under trials. A lot of them are being used on the patient, and, mo and these are, they are all immunotherapies. So, um, so I think, is, is that your question? Yes, it is. <laughs> And, and let's get one more term since you've used it, monoclonal uh -huh. antibodies. What does uh -huh. that mean for a layman? So, so essentially, just uh, to put it off uh, simply, is um, you know, all these cancer cells, let's take an example for, of a common cancer like a breast cancer. Um, so some of the breast cancers express a protein called HER2 new. And um, um, this uh, HER2 new um, is how these cancers grow. Um, so what these monoclonal antibodies do, they are specifically programmed um, or made in such a way to block that protein receptor. If that is blocked from outside, there is no growth, so cancer cells cannot grow. And the same phenomena is used in a lot of uh, hematologic malignancies where we use all these monoclonal antibodies on CD19, CD20 markers which are um, expressed on the cancer cells. All right. A patient that's going to be receiving immunotherapy, from their perspective, what's the, how does it work? What's the process? So um, I, this is what I tell my patients, and a lot of my patients ask about the side effects of immunotherapy, and that is what we tell them before we start our, this immunotherapy. Um, the most important one um, is the immune-related adverse events, which can happen with uh, immunotherapy, and these do not occur uh, immediately like you are not going to see any effects um, which you see with traditional chemo like nausea, vomiting and all those things. Um, what we do see is immune related adverse events is overdrive of your inflammatory process. So your immune system is activated, it starts killing the cancer cells which are in the body and then um, they spill over all these uh, cytokines and inflammatory mediators elsewhere which causes these adverse events. Most importantly, these uh, adverse events, they happen later in the course of treatment, and most of the times they are easily controlled by steroids. How is immunotherapy administered? What happens? How do you do it? So, um, so when you say immunotherapy, it's like a broad banner. Uh, we are talking about checkpoint blockade and cancer, uh, CAR T cell vaccines. Let's talk about checkpoint inhibition, which we use commonly in our um, infusion clinic. So just like traditional chemo, uh, it's an IV infusion. Uh, patients get it through their veins. Um, uh, the treatments are very well tolerated and they are of, in, of very less duration. You know, you must have heard people getting chemotherapy for three hours, four hour infusions. So we are looking at immunotherapy, which is like relatively lesser uh, duration. So they come here, they get infusion every three weeks and that's how they do it. Okay. Very easily tolerated. You mentioned um, lung cancer earlier. How effective is immunotherapy for lung cancer? Well, the most um, remarkable progress uh, which we have seen over the years in lung cancer treatment comes from immunotherapy. And uh, by immunotherapy here, I specifically mean the immune checkpoint blockade. Um, so essentially, um, these, um, these checkpoint blockade drugs, these are the drugs which are releasing the breaks on the immune system, which the cancer cells mm -hmm. have put them. And um, uh, in lung cancer, they have shown remarkable progress, especially in non-small cell lung cancer. All right, so 
other cancers, other possibilities for immunotherapy treating other types of cancers that currently rely on the traditional approaches. What's on the horizon? So um, a lot of things, very exciting things in the horizon. Um, looking at the ASCO 2016 updates, uh, which is like um, um, a conference where all the oncologists all over the world meet and discuss about their various trials. So the latest updates uh, are in um, head and neck cancers where traditionally we have been using chemotherapy um, all along and now they have uh, seen an effect of these checkpoint blockade uh, in treating those cancers uh, even the ones which were heavily pretreated in the past and now they have uh, progressed so that's where um, there has been a lot of uh, data on a lot of success uh, small cell lung cancer uh, for many many years we did not have any good um, chemotherapy regimen or any treatment uh, to treat small cell and uh, we still use chemotherapy for it but it has a limited effect and it doesn't last long um, but now there are uh, trials and data to support uh, combination of different uh, immunotherapy agents I'm talking about the checkpoint blockade two different types combined together and having an effect on the small cell cancer cells and um, it is very promising the results are still um, like preliminary and uh, they are waiting to be uh, like uh, uh, expanded on uh, a huge population of patients but they're still in trials but that is very exciting news for treating small cell lung cancer okay what about the cancers that are particularly difficult to deal with pancreatic cancer cervical cancers the cancers where that's been very very difficult to deal with before um, Studies are still evolving. We still use traditional chemotherapy for those cancers for now. Um, but I think there will come a point in time where um, we will have a use of the, this immunotherapy or checkpoint blockade in treating these cancers. But so far, uh, there hasn't been any promising studies uh, to um, kind of tell my patients that, hey, pancreatic cancer, we can treat it with the immunotherapy. No, we still haven't. Um, we, we still haven't, we are still evolving in that regard. So doctor, a patient in your office the, considering immunotherapy, what are the questions they typically, typically ask you? Uh, the first question they ask me is about the side effect profile uh, because everyone is worried about uh, chemotherapy side effects. So what I tell them is all the side effects uh, which we call immune related adverse events are uh, essentially related to the, uh, our immune system getting into an overdrive. So there is a lot of inflammation and that can be in any part of the body. Give and me some examples. So um, patients like down the line and a few of them, they develop pneumonitis, which is um, inflammation of the lungs. Mm. And that is effectively treated either by stopping the drug and uh, putting uh, people on steroids. And most of the time it works well. And uh, steroids take care of that um, overdrive uh, of our immune system and then they do well and we resume it back. So, so that is like uh, one of um, the common side effects which we witness. Um, apart from that, it's very easily tolerable. Um, there is no uh, neutropenic fever. Um, you know, all my chemo patients, uh, we always tell them about neutropenic precautions, staying away from sick people, uh, wearing a mask when you go to, um, um, to a meeting or meet a lot of people, staying away from sick people. Um, in immunotherapy, the neutropenic fever uh, element is a lot lesser. In fact, it's non-existent. So, um, and it's easily tolerable, so patients do not de develop that nausea, vomiting, dehydration, which we associate with chemo. Hair loss. Hair loss. Mm -hmm. We don't have all those side effects with it. So, um, so that is why a lot of patients favor this. Um, but we have to realize that uh, chemotherapy is still the backbone for a lot of cancers. It's only if um, the, that cancer cell has a specific biomarker for which this immunotherapy can be used. Um, and, um, and, 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 and essentially that's the way, way why we use it in some people. What about the cost? Is it, are insurance companies likely to cover it? Insurance companies are likely to cover it. Um, everything um, uh, you know, based on the success on um, um, on AS in ASCO with all these trials and all the checkpoint inhibitors, all of them, uh, especially in lung cancer, um, are approved by insurances. Uh, they are used as uh, first-line treatment in some uh, cancers in place of chemotherapy, especially if the cancer cells express the PDL1 marker, 
which is like a specific biomarker uh, some lung cancers have. So uh, we don't uh, see any problems with insurances, especially in this regard. Okay. If someone is a candidate for immunotherapy, what's the next step? Well, the first thing is uh, they need to talk to their oncologist whether um, immunotherapy is uh, approved for, that, for their specific type of cancer. And if there are any clinical trials uh, where they have used immunotherapy, um, and I think those are the two questions which they need to ask their oncologist. Um, and, and I think that's like the first step. Very well. Doctor, learned a lot. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much for inviting me. Yeah, sure.